Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Renita Young, and now it's time for the big three, three stocks, three charts, and three trades. So let's welcome in Ben Lichtenstein. He's gonna walk us through the charts, and here to take us through the trades is Joel Hawthorne, head trader and CEO of the TheMorningSnapshot.com. Great to see you both, great to see you, Joel. Let's get it started with your thoughts on what's happening in markets today, because we've been struggling to find direction in 2024 in these first few trading days. Uh, Happy New Year, Renita. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, always a pleasure to see Ben as well. Uh, I would definitely say uh, as the market is, uh, we're officially in the new year. This is the first full week of trading. I think the market is seeking a catalyst to continue with direction. Uh, we understand that markets uh, don't necessarily uh, love to trend uh, to uh, uncharted territory. And that's that would mean that we are going to continue to make higher highs how we close the year. Uh, with uh, E-mini futures trading 48.15, uh, just as we were wrapping up 2023. Uh, however, as we're looking at uh, the new year here, what's going to be the catalyst for us to continue to go higher than that? Is that going to be upcoming earnings season that we're vastly approaching? Mm -hmm. I think the banks report this Friday, or is that going to be is that going to be trouble in the clouds to come with us having some uh, lower price action that we're possibly going to see because uh, bonds are going to start to move or is the dollar gonna to continue to go higher? So I think the narrative right now is just looking for a catalyst in each direction uh, for either momentum for the bulls or the bears. Mm, sounds just about right. I mean, we saw markets up yesterday, markets down today, looking for direction, but you do have a few trades for us, of course. First, let's talk about AMD. It's still trading pretty close to that 52 week high right now, and shares are up around 1% right now. So walk us through the first trade. Absolutely. I think we all saw NVIDIA yesterday. We set, set some news about NVIDIA coming out with new chips and things of that nature and definitely getting some positive news there. And I think one of the sleepers there is AMD. AMD still has some room, like you said, a vastly approaching that 52 week high of about 151 and change. Uh, I think there's still some room there. We're at 147 and change currently. I'm a bull here because I do think as uh, some of the other names like an NVIDIA may start to appear to be overbought where they are kind of printing you know all-time highs this is a name that is attractive to me because i can use those previous highs as uh, targets and execution levels mm, okay well let's talk about the chart a little bit deeper with ben lichtenstein thank you for joining us ben absolutely walk us through what you're looking at a uh, very bullish pattern here so supportive of uh the approach that uh, joel's taking to this one shares of amd on the move higher let's begin with well the a lows from last week and the rally we've seen into this week. You can see we're currently trading right around 147, uh, up on the day by over 1% here as we speak. Just off the highs, we saw 148.31. This move comes uh, off the lows from last week around 133. So a significant move to the upside here. We're talking uh, $15 and really more importantly, migration of value, right? This is what we're looking for. Areas of consolidation, where values formed at higher and higher levels. And uh, let's step back from the five minute time frame. similar pattern you're gonna see playing out on the hourly candle chart. Again, we're going back to the end of August, October, beginning of November, when we saw earnings that sent the stock up and through this $95, $100 level. And as we take a look, a very similar situation playing out on the 60 minute candle chart. My eye was drawn to three areas of consolidation. I think you, if you wanted to get a more fine tooth comb out, you could identify multiple areas that played out throughout these big moves here that we saw beginning of December, uh, beginning of November, and again, currently balancing around 143. So a very bullish pattern here. Also, notice how we bottomed out end of October, beginning of November, back in 2022, mm -hmm. and you can see how we've been off to the races since. On the daily candle chart, uh, look what happened. As we were forming areas of value to the downside, AMD was trending lower again into the beginning of last year, bottomed out, took out 92. That was a key area that the bears did not want to see taken out. And since we've been above 92, in fact, we retested that level uh, in October of last year, again, coming off those lows we just identified around 92. But this is, again, very bullish pattern across the board. The five-minute 
uh, the more intermediate and on this uh, bigger picture, longer term chart here, Joel? Definitely what I've been hearing over the past couple of days, that this stock has a lot more room to go. And you can see that in the chart. There. Absolutely. Thank you for walking us Absolutely. through that. And next up, we want to talk about Shopify because this stock is also still uh, close to its 52-week highs. And as a matter of fact, it's up around 113% over the past 12 months. So walk us through what you see in the trade, Joel. Absolutely. I think Shopify right here is getting a bit top heavy as well. Uh, a lot of these names uh, that we've seen, we hear so many 52 week high names. We hear so many reaching all time highs or new all time highs. Mm -hmm. And this is one that I think the 52 week high about 79.99 is where we're really approaching closely. So I want to fade that high. Uh, I'm a bit of a bear here. I think that we're, it's gonna as, at some point hit the brakes or I'm anticipating that at least, I wish I, I wish I had the crystal ball. So I wanna sell the 90 call expiring February 16th, simultaneously buy a 95 call, same expiration date, collect a credit of about 68 cents and have a break even of 90.69. This gives me, again, roughly a little over a month's time or so to for Shopify not to break that 90 uh, price level on the stock. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I know I'm kind of fading the uptrend, but mm -hmm. I, I just think that this is one that may run out of gas at these levels. Okay, so there may be some credence to that. It, of course, you've shown that the way that it's credence to that, but I'm looking at where the relative strength index is as well, Ben. And while it was a little bit hot in November, December, it has since come down. So does that have a little bit to do with what you might have to say about it? Well, relative strength index may have come off a bit, but price still reflecting um, uh, one that's bid. Shop continues to enjoy higher highs, higher lows. It's trending higher on multiple time frames. So I have a hard time getting ahead of this one and uh, taking the other side, the short side here as Joel's uh, assumed here. Let's begin with the rally. Similar patterns we just looked at with AMD off the lows from last week, $70, $71, all the way up to just shy of 80. There is a consolidation on this five minute candle chart that have and continue to form at higher and higher levels. We're actually now breaking out. We're in a vertical phase here out of that balance area that formed around 77.50. So the bulls are looking for a new area consolidation to form at a higher level. Joel is right. He's definitely against the trend here. Similar pattern, uh -huh. similar chart as AMD. We're now going back on the hourly candles to the beginning of November. And you can see a big move up here on the left side of your screen. Uh -huh. And you can see consolidation that's occurred uh, since. Let me just show you the areas that my eye was drawn to as we rallied. and. Uh, this was a big move up. You can see 45, 50, all the way up to, well, Joel was mentioning this $80 level, 79 is the area he's got his eye on. And we have tested that a couple times and we've stalled, but I feel like every time you knock on the door, the more likely it is eventually someone's just gonna open it up and you're gonna uh, be able to get through that key level. In this instance, 79, $80. One more step back, let me show you what's going on. Daily time frame. similar pattern here. You can see as I pull this up, look, Areas of consolidation that formed higher and higher levels. In this instance, we've added some time on, but you can see a very well-defined trend higher, currently balancing around 75, testing the upper extreme of it, but you can see the areas that have formed along the way up and the, the attempts to test that uh, prior area balance while you're currently forming one held each time. We saw that play out back in March of 2023. We saw that as well again in October of last year around 45 and look again as it looks Pierce trend higher here across multiple time frames currently balancing 75 and testing the upper extreme thereof okay I can see both cases when it comes to this absolutely <laughs> um, let's walk through Celsius next because this stock is one that really did blaze last year as more healthy sports healthy <laughs> sports drinks came out and this one really did lend itself on top in so, so many ways. But yearly, it's up around 84%, and it's trying its best to get back to that 52-week high right now. But why don't you walk us through the trade, Joel? Absolutely. Just like you said, Renita, uh, you know, uh, the uh, an, another version of uh, the alternative sports drink, maybe a healthier version, I think that's their marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, I do <laughs> see the chart. It definitely has broken out. Uh, to the upside over maybe some stalled highs of recent. And because of that, I wanna be a bull here as well. Uh, I think the 52 week high is about uh, 68.95 uh, or so. And uh, right now looking at it, I wanna sell some options here. I wanna sell the 50 put, simultaneously buying the 48.33 put, both expire February 16th. 
credit up about 26 cents, break even is 49.75. Uh, that 50 level is very key because that appears to be right near a, that 50-ish level appears to be a strong floor uh, for some of the lower price action. So we're gonna see if that 50 level can hold up, but definitely uh, maybe they get a bid here. Maybe it goes higher because everyone is new year, new me, the new year's <laughs> resolution, you know? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think you're right about that. The gym was really full this morning, by the way. By the way, I did not make it a new year, new me thing. I started my gym thing last year. <laughs> so nice, I started back, nice. I should say. <laughs> but this makes sense thinking about that within the trade of Celsius. So Ben, why don't you walk us through the technicals? Can you see a little bit of that in the chart? Absolutely. We're <laughs> going to go two for three here today. Okay. Renita. Uh, I definitely see the bullish scenario that Joel's laying out here on uh, across multiple time frames, similar patterns we discussed in terms of the other two stocks. And uh, take a look here on the five minute time frame. We're going to kind of hop skipping through the uh, uh, time frames or the charts in the similar fashion as we did uh, in the last two instances. Bottom left, top right, you've got a well-defined trend here. We're looking at five-minute candles, and we're also looking at four areas of consolidation that have formed. Uh, 51, 53, 55, 57 we've identified, and not uncommon to see areas of value move at higher and higher levels in a very systematic $2 uh, increments in this uh, fashion here. So what are we looking for right now? Well, something to form possibly around 59, 60 as we are in a vertical phase right now, but it's starting to see something a little bit more overlapping rotational play out relative to like really high conviction initiative, higher highs and higher lows type move, but a definitely bullish pattern. Taking a look here at uh, the uh, hourly candle chart, you can see now two really well-defined areas of consolidation, and this is what we look for again. This is sort of supportive of that bullish narrative that Joel was laying out in terms of the fundamentals. You can see the lows that we saw uh, down around 48. That was back in the middle of December. But really, look at this, overlapping rotational, very random, not a lot of conviction associated with uh, what we saw after, uh, well, throughout most of the middle of November into December, balancing, as I like to say, around 51. We break out and take out that 53, 54, 55 area, and then we kind of go sideways around 57. Again, you can see the significant associated with this recent move up, and it's mm -hmm. in the direction of the trend that we've been seeing. So very much supportive, again, of that uh, trend up or the fundamental narrative Joe lied out. Lastly, take a look here, Anita. Shares of CELH. Now, we're going all the way back June, July of 2020, and okay. again, a very similar pattern. Areas of consolidation that continue to form to the upside. So what I like about this is it's across multiple time frames. You can see uh, the trends really well defined here. And we're now just breaking up and through the middle of this range here, through 57, which opens the door up for a retest of 68, 69, should we continue mm -hmm. to see the energy that we have seen uh, over the last couple weeks here. This was a failed attempt to auction lower down around 50, which honored a key area around 48. And mm -hmm. yeah, through 57, off to the races. Let's, uh, let's get back to those highs. Yeah, well, it looks like it could be doing that. I mean, it's more than enough uh, impetus for it to mm -hmm. continue to go higher. Joel, quick question while you're still there. Are you still there? Great, quick question. Do you see this um, longer term trend? Are we thinking, how far out are you thinking this type of trend could continue? What may interrupt it? Uh, well, let me ask you, are we talking still Celsius or are we talking overall market? Celsius, pardon me. Um, oh, no, fine. Uh, yeah, I do think there's more momentum there. I think one thing that I like to take a look at here is just how much participation uh, some of these names have. And we saw before their stock split uh, last year that mm -hmm. this was a name that was getting a lot of action. So and there's been a lot of bullish momentum here, as Ben just mentioned. So I think this is a name that can definitely continue. Uh, but I think a lot of this is going to be contingent upon uh, just how long the, the overall market can continue to um, run hot, run hot. It's been very, uh, this this market for bulls has been very rewarding. Um, overall, uh, even today we see um, there's been some reverting. Uh, we've get, kind of paired back some of those losses. So mm -hmm. we opened a little lower, we're, we're, we're kind of reverted back to some of the high levels from yesterday. If that continues, a name like Celsius can definitely benefit. All right, thank you for wrapping that up for us. We really appreciate you for joining us. Joel Hawthorne, TheMorningSnapshot.com, and Ben Lichtenstein, who's here from our show Futures, right here on Schwab Network. Thank you both for being here.